Well, welcome to a new Harry's Farm video. Um, been a few weeks since I did the last report and there's been lots going on. We're gonna have a look at some of the crops on the farm, um, discuss what's going on in the world of grain prices and on farm food security, etc. But I wanted to kick off just with the fence. Now you, you saw um, um, Toby Young putting this fence up in previous reports. All this estate fencing is now finished painted etc and I think just looks terrific I'm really chuffed with it we've got several of these sort of personal gates like this and we've got some 10 foot gates over there as well look at it I, I'm so chuffed with this fence because it's like bespoke obviously for this place and the way you can get the curves and into the um, ha ha and then having these particular gates made to size for whatever the gap lots of you have discussed about pricing I'm not, I'm not going to discuss the exact price of the gates, but fencing in general, it kicks off at around £10 for a sort of post um, with wire, sort of sheep netting, etc. £20, these are ballpark figures for post and rail, wood. This, this is all very dependent on the steel price. And I was fortunate to book this before the steel really took off. And we put in about 400 metres of it in all. And it was under £20,000 to install. It's 40 something a metre. But uh, nearly half of the cost is just the raw steel. But then there's all this work to, you know, put it up, make it absolutely straight, do those curves, um, put it in the ground, that specialist um, post banger and all the rest of it. So the, the life of it... And just the look of it around this day, I think is worth the premium. I'm not going to do the whole farm in it, but uh, as a statement around the house and up the drive, I think it's absolutely ace and I'm well chuffed. So I have to thank Toby again for all the hard effort he put into creating this fence. But it's not the only sort of fencing we're doing at the moment, because over there I've got Mark Cheney and we're doing some stone walling. And I want to go and show you how that all works. Right, just to explain what's going on here, this is my lockdown project in 2020. Because this was a complete mess. It's always been a bit of a strange corner on the farm. There's this post and rail that was put in years ago, I think in early eight, late 70s, early 80s, and it was just scrub. Couldn't, you know, it was really dense scrub, and it and it sort of blocked our view from the house of the um, this field big picket and beyond and I cleared it up so in 2020 I set to and basically cleared this area and then we exposed this stone wall here and I thought oh that's interesting I wonder if we could get it built up so the plan is to bring this back into the field this will go grass in here we've still got a bit of scrub this will die off but then plant trees in this bit here and we're going to put a fence somewhere around here that then goes up to the stone wall. But yeah, Mark is busy up here. We, Mark Cheney in the village is a stone wall expert. I think that's fair enough, isn't it? Calling you an expert on stone walls. You've been doing it well, decades I've had a bit of practice, now. Yeah. Yes, yeah, plenty of practice. <laughs> and uh, we're going to give you plenty of practice on the farm doing this as yes. well, aren't we? Yeah. Yeah. And you've, yeah, I've been away, and you've been quite busy while I've been away, haven't you? you yes, yeah. Yeah. You've Made done a good start. It. You did. Can you, there was the big hole down there that you fixed and put that up. What, what I can't get over about the fence, the stone walling here, is it's different levels, isn't it? You yeah. look at that side, and it looks about that high, and then you come this side, and oh, oh, it's much bigger this yeah, side, yeah. isn't it? It is, yeah, definitely. Yeah. It's probably a good eight, ten inches higher there than it is here. It's so odd. And that one was even bigger, wasn't it? It was about, yeah, two foot difference, yeah, yeah, do you think? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I can't get over this because this uh, this is just risen in days and uh, it takes a bit of yeah a few more days normally to build a wall but there was a fairly solid base here wasn't there you it, were... it was reasonably good yeah um there were a couple of areas you can i don't know if you can see there's an area there that was bulging i had to rebuild there's yeah. one or two areas down there that were bulging out or leaning in that needed attention but generally it wasn't too bad um, no which is quite nice yeah but um yeah we've got not some so good down not there. so quite good areas <laughs> down here haven't we i know this is and the other thing it was all covered in moss and you've cleared yeah. all the moss off and that and that sort of exposed it i can't yeah. get over it yeah. yeah i mean it's completely covered in moss. only the thing is with moss one it hides all the problems and two yeah. it moisture gets into the right. wall and it retains moisture and it's no good for the wall yeah it's bad news isn't it it's like yeah. ivy growing up as well that all sort of shifts everything doesn't it Absolutely. as well yeah yeah but yeah if you work down here you're, yeah your guide is this bit of string here yep. isn't it you put yep. that either side 
And how much have you knocked down here? It probably the bottom part of it was better than that side. Right. But the top part it was pretty much non-existent about that really? much. So I've had to build up, get some stone obviously from over there and make up the difference in height to keep it the same level as this, to be able to keep the same level all the way along. I can't see the join. I don't know how you do it. <laughs> there is a join here, that this is new wall here. Uh, the top three, four courses. Is it really? Well, as you can see over there, oh, yes. where my line is, there. Yeah. that's the difference to make up. Yeah, yeah. So, so this is what, and this uh, little guide on stone wall in the little bits I know, you have, what do you call these stones? That, they're the builders. They're the builders, right? Yeah. These? The middle fillers. Middle fillers and builders the other side. Builders the other side. So, and it, and it's, it's a pyramid, isn't it? It goes up and gradually, over. gradually, gradually, yeah. yeah. Just a gradual, so that the, so the weight bears in either side towards each other, if you know what I mean. And then the toppers, as yeah. you turn it on top, yeah, that holds it. They the tie it all together, yeah. So when you yeah. put a topper, on, well, when you put a topper on, yeah, it sits like that, and then that holds that stone and that, and stone, that stone, and that just binds the top together. Amazing, and. What I can't go over having been on the farm a few years now is how the stone varies all around the farm, isn't it? Yeah. Some places it's really big stones. Yeah, some are really some's thin. Really thin. Yeah. And it's yeah. all just what was lying around when I they built all this <laughs> yeah. lot, isn't it? Yep. Yeah. But um, yeah, it gets a bit trickier here, doesn't it? Up yeah. here. This is well, a bit I, of a mess, isn't it? I'll be finishing this bit off this morning and then hope to get some toppers on. Yeah. And then the next job is to sort sort that out. We've had some livestock here haven't we sort of live in here. Yeah. We've got holes and rabbit holes of roundabout and that has just knocked this down. Yeah. So this bit what how are you going to tackle this? Well I think the on? first thing is just to take it all down. Right. And then see what we're up against. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And then decide what to do there. Yes. <laughs> go, in, go in the instruction manual see yeah. what you're going to do here. Yeah. There's quite yeah. a lot. Yeah. It, it might it might be a lot worse it might be not as bad as it looks who knows. No. We'll, we'll find out. Yeah, well, I think, you know, dare I say it, that's, that's the good bit. That's very satisfying, that, because that's yes. going to happen really much quicker than we expected, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, to get that definitely. far. Yeah. And it's just going to look great, because you see it from the house, and it's, yeah, great. But here, things might slow up a bit. Yeah. Yeah. Gosh, there's 100 metres, isn't there, I yeah. think, in all to do. Yeah. And what we, this is 20, roughly. 20 and we've done 10 over there so we're 30 gone. into 100 yeah Crikey. but we've done the easy bits yeah <laughs> yeah so how many weeks months is this then you've been this is probably two weeks it's two weeks for the two two, weeks two sections and the, and the bit up there um it's yeah. a job to say because until we clear it and we see what we're up against it's yeah. a job to sort of estimate yeah, and how much stone you're going to and use as well. And how much stone you're going to need, yeah. It? Yeah, so we're quite we, lucky. It's, it's probably a good, for the rest of it, it's probably a good couple of months left. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Well, you'll be featuring again, I <laughs> sense, yeah, in future Harry's Farm videos. But yeah. up to now, that looks absolutely A-smart. I'm good. chuffed to bits. That's um, the main thing. But I, I will be seriously impressed when that looks like that. Yeah, well, it will do eventually. Yeah, one day. Good. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. OK, no problems. Now what I want to show you next is all the arable crops, and in particular the winter wheat which is just here. I'm not going to bother with the oilseed rate which is in still in full flower and is actually looking really good this year. And the barley which is all coming out, all the awns are out. We we're actually spraying that this morning just a fungicide going on. I've been away from the farm for a couple of weeks and I cannot get over the difference. This time of year is a terrific time on the farm because all the weeds haven't sort of taken over the crop and things there, it all looks really good. Right, gonna have a closer look. Now this has really come on since I was last in here. This is, this stage is known as stem extension. This is when it really starts to grow up and we're now looking for sort of flag leaf coming through as well. I can see also down here all those um, spring wild oats. They are all in the base here. They're not growing anymore here. You can tell that the herbicide has sort of had it, had the effect there. You can see that sort of dying off down there. They're all at the base. But the actual wheat itself, if I take a plant out here, ugh, I didn't quite want to pull that out. That's what it looks like now at the moment. So if I take a main tiller, let's have a little look. Where's a main tiller? That looks like a good main tiller. And that, that is known as the flag leaf. So that's the final leaf emerging there. 
there we go that's the size of it there and my aim is to keep these leaves as healthy as possible i think that was probably the the um, nitrogen fertilizer going on we, we do a liquid nitrogen spray and it sometimes scorches the leaves i say that's what that was we did one last week and then it's rained and the key thing this year is how much moisture we have been on the edge of saying there's a bit of a drought going on um, cracks appear in the soil but fortunately we had two days ago 10 mil of rain and that was very welcome and I can tell just looking at the crop this is not under stress the leaves aren't curled up or anything and they all look pretty healthy but I just want to chop through this so I'm going to strip off the leaves here I can feel the nodes as it's termed there's a node there another node there but if I am very careful here there we are taking the sort of center of the plant out that's the top that's the flag leaf there and then if i just get a knife on this there we are there is the wheat ear just about to emerge so it's sort of fully formed there and that after the flag leaf has been out it's known as the flag leaf because that's the main driver for yield that's that's your key plant because that's out right at the top that's taken all the sunlight you want to keep that one disease free and the second first and second leaf because that's what feeds the ear and puts the you know yield into the into the crop but that as i say is on its way so yeah another couple of weeks probably the next report we should just see the orms coming out the top of the plant now i want to just talk about what's what's happening in the world market i mentioned it before because we are in unprecedented times food security is now a new story food prices etc what on earth's going on the price of wheat in particular has gone crazy and if a year ago if i put 150 pounds in a budget i would say well it's a bit strong and 350 400 pounds for oilseed rate that would be the upper limits today harvest wheat is at 300 pounds just over 300 pounds uh, oilseed rate 700 and something pounds 720 so unprecedented level levels i never ever thought i would see at all double um, a high price from a year ago and that's having obviously a, a complete change in every all the food matters because this is this is actually a feed wheat that i might get milling quality but feed meat means it goes for mainly chicken feed or stock feed or something like that 80 percent of the cost of eggs for example or chickens um, chicken meat is from the feed so the price of wheat is absolutely critical so the industries are really getting hit with the price of wheat going up so much is the people who feed wheat to their animals to create um, the meat so chickens nightmare business at the moment because the prices at supermarket level aren't rising fast enough to take account of the price of wheat same with the pig industry i was reading farmers weekly yesterday that the pig industry reckoned that 80 percent of pig producers in the uk could go out of business out of this year because the actual price of the feed they're feeding the pigs is gone up so fast is not reflected in the price of pig meat today they reckon around you're losing 58 pounds per animal it's costing 230 240 pence per kilo to produce pork and they're receiving about 165 170 pence per kilo so just unsustainable so that's where the real pressure points are from an arable point of view it's just peculiar we're going to have a very good financial year and the grain price is set on a world standard so the price i'm getting for grain is similar to what's happening in the, um, the us and eu etc it's a world market commodity i'm not beholden to the supermarket saying we'll only pay you this for your eggs and i i only produce the wheat once a year and that's why it's always been a traded commodity well chickens eggs come every day so you need a contract with an end producer to take your eggs because they every day you have all these eggs to move you can only do that with a contract with an end retailer like a supermarket and they're just not reacting to what's going on actually at the industry at the, at the coal face the other thing that's going on i've noticed around here are all the environmental schemes you are now seeing in the fields obviously this is a field of wheat 
but I can look around my neighbours and suddenly these sort of wildflower mixes are all now very visible. And those are the guys who have taken up the environmental schemes that the government's made available. And they're around 600-ish pounds a hectare you receive for growing wildflowers, etc., and pollen nectar mixes. That is also making the grain price go up because quite a lot of land, especially on the marginal areas where, around where I farm in the Cotswold, no end of people have entered this scheme and that's probably um, reduced the actual UK harvest by a million tonnes is what my grain merchant was telling me the other day. But it's very visible now and you can understand because it's guaranteed income but then again none of us thought we'd have these grain prices we're seeing now. Whether it's the right direction with food security becoming an issue, don't know what Stanley's found, he's found something up there, spotted something. I'm not sure if it's the right direction, which I stated before. DEFRA did get in touch. They um, did want to talk to me to take me through all the environmental schemes and why food security wasn't an issue. That was a few months ago. It's gone very quiet on that front because I think we should be producing food in this country and this will continue to do food. But I can quite understand all my neighbours taking advantage of the crazy schemes the government put in place about a year or two ago. But anyway, there you go. There's a catch up on the farm. All looking good at the moment. We still need a bit more rain, but I think we might get some thunderstorms tonight. And uh, yeah, I'll do a report back in a couple of weeks. And we'd, probably this has grown up a little bit and the ears will be coming out. So anyway, hope you enjoyed this video. If you have, keep watching, keep subscribing. More videos coming along very soon, won't they be, Stanley? Hey, eh? you're going to be in the next video. You're going to behave.